sometimes you fall into sin have faith in God never run away from God don't be like Adam be like David Adam and Eve ran away from God because they had sinned but when David knew that he had sinned, he fell before the Lord. And you know what he said? Don't send me away from your presence. Neither will you take away your Holy, your Holy Spirit. And then God came back through Nathan and said, go and tell David that he has a heart like mine. Ladies and gentlemen, God has vowed, has promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. He will never leave you. Now, that is his promise. He promised before you were born. He promised you before you were born again and when you came to salvation he still maintains his promise. And he says neither will I forsake you nor leave you. What does it mean? I have loved you with an ever everlasting love. And nothing will separate you from my love. Is it the future? which you do not know no is it the past is it the present is it your fears is it angels demons poverty lack in all this in all these things God says you are more than conqueror and in all this nothing can separate you from his love. Now not these words. He doesn't say nothing will separate you from the love you have for him. God did not say that. Mm -hmm. Listen to what God is saying. In all these things, nothing will separate you from the love I have for you. He did not say, nothing will separate you from the love you have for me. God cannot trust your love. He trusts his love. He doesn't trust your love. Your love is like a mist. It can shift because of conditions. But he trusts his love. That's why he says, neither the future, nor the present, neither the past, neither the present. Because God knows something will happen in the future. Something you do not know. But he promises beforehand that as you step into the future, and if something happens always remember I promised my love for you will not change hallelujah amen that's why he says in the book of Isaiah, I will help you. I will sustain you. I will strengthen your arms. And I will make you great. In these words, God is saying, I, I, I. I'll 
take hold of your hand and I will take you in secret places and I will give you honor and I will elevate you and I will strengthen you. I will make people bow down before you. Even the world will bow down. I, the Lord, as follow me, follow me, I may take you to the secret places. I may take you to the places of elevation. But then he pauses and says, Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though you walk through the fire, though you walk through the desert, the, though you walk through the waters the water will not sweep you the fire will not burn you even in the desert in the water in the fire I will be with you now note these words as my aim the Lord's aim what God is saying yes as long as you follow me, I'm taking you to the abundance. I'm taking you to the place of honor. That's, that's my purpose. That is my vision. But I know there is a way which seems right in your mind. There are some decisions you may take which seems right to you. And I know those decisions, those roots or ways, the Bible says, seems right to you. But the end is destruction. Now God says, I will not lead you in the desert. I don't lead you in the desert. I don't lead you in the fire. I don't lead you in the waters. But your decisions, the way you look at things, your desires, your choices, as we are in the journey of salvation, there is a way which you may see which may seem good attractive desirous wonderful excellent which seems right to you it brings you life oh man it appeals to your emotions amen and then you decide to go there God says still I will be faithful to my word. That rod, that decision, those desires may take you through the fire. But I'll come with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? God is speaking about the future. Because he knows. Let me tell you one thing. Some of us say, Amen, church. Amen. God is God. So sometimes when you are going through the shadow of the valley of death, never be afraid. Simply turn around and trust in the Lord. Is someone sick? Let him ask for the elders of the church to anoint him and to pray a prayer of faith. Is someone going through hard moments and troubles? Let him pray. Intercede and speak to God. Is someone happy? Sing psalms and joyful songs. And praise the Lord for the good gifts he has given you. Has someone fallen short of the glory of God? And you have not attained and you feel condemned? Run to an embrace and, and hold on the Lord. 
Amen. Amen. Don't run to the devil. Run to Jesus. And his arms are right wide open. Because his arms is always out there saying, I love you this much. Lord, how much do you love me? This much. Lord, how, how much do you love me? And Jesus says, this much. You know, when he's coming to me, and I will say, oh, Ambrose, I love you. No, no, when he's joining, I'm Ambrose, I love you. But Jesus says, I love you so much. That's why my arms are so stretched. The cross is the symbol of God's love. Each time you look at the cross, that's why the Bible, the, the Bible tells us to, 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 to do communion every time in remembrance of what the Lord did for us on the cross. Whenever you are breaking bread and taking wine, you are remembering the love, the action of love. This is my body. Which will be broken for you so that you may be healed. And this is the cup of the new covenant. This is my blood. Which is which represents the cup of the new covenant. Which will be poured out tomorrow for the remission of your sins. Each time you look at the cross, it's a beautiful message. By his stripes you are healed. By his death you, the, the, a way is made for you to heaven. By his blood your sins, past, present, future are forgiven forever internally. So therefore that Perfect peace. That perfect love. Once you know that perfect love, it will drive fear from you. You will no longer be afraid of God. You will love God. Give God a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Today we are winding up the message of Behold my good and faithful servant. I would like, I would like to appreciate all the pastors and the ministers who have been teaching different teachings about my good and faithful servant. And I remember the beginning that I, I gave you some principles why we serve the Lord. Number one, I said because through serving God are the good works predestined for us made manifest. Amen. Amen. As we come to Christ and we start serving the Lord, the purpose of our salvation is made manifest. We are born again, known to die and go to heaven. We are born again that we may co work, we may be co workers with the Lord. We are the living blocks which are being made, put together to make a, a spiritual house 
for the spiritual sacrifices of our God. Each one of us, God has put ability and capacity to play a certain role in his kingdom. Amen. Amen. The house of God, which is the church of God, is built by many people. For example, look at this building. However big it is, it's made up of many different types and particles of different things. There is nails, iron bars, bricks, cement, stones, iron, and so on. But each Peace is playing a role. There are thousands of bricks. Each one on another. Each one is playing a major role. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you are not yet in heaven is that you may play your role. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Let's open it right now and read it. It was he who gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. Why? Why are you here? Why do we have pastors and teachers? You find someone teaching, another one is preaching, another one is pastoring, others in classes are teaching. When you go to the classes, you find teachers there. God is saying, the reason why he brought all those people is to prepare God's people. Who are God's people? Who is God's person here? Let me see a hand. God is saying to prepare God's people. Who are God's people? Let me see a hand. Somebody who say it's me. Say I am God's person. We are God's people. Okay. Now God is saying the reason why I put these people here to prepare you for the work of your service so that the body of Christ may be built. Ah, it means there is something I will never do until he does it. Thing that I will never do until Emma does it. Until Sarah does it. That's why we are different. We think different. We have different roles. Peter says, We are living stones which is being made to build a house, a spiritual house for the Lord. In Israel, they don't use bricks. They use stones because it's a mountainous nation. It's a rocky, yes, it's a rocky mountain here. Yeah? I mean, a rocky country. So they shape the, the stones. If Peter was here, he would say, We are leaving bricks. Each one putting on another. But on a different location, in a different place. To play a different role. Say with me. I am God's people. I am a God's person. To do my duty. To build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Did Amen. you know that? 
whether in giving in service in encouragement in leading in singing in instruments in advice in all all of us when we do what we're supposed to do this church of Christ not the building we are the church this church of Christ we will grow bigger and bigger and richer and richer stronger and stronger Amen. You know, everybody is important. Don't undermine. Some of us have five talents. Others four. Others three. Maybe two. And another one one. So it doesn't matter. You may not do what I'm doing. You may not do what he is doing. You may not do what the other one is doing. But oh, he may not do what you are doing. But when we all of I mean, when all of us come together and do what we ought to do, the glory of God is revealed. And then we grow bigger, stronger, blessed in the name of Jesus. Give God a mighty hand clap. Think about this. If we did not have people with the gifts of ushering, and you simply come on a Sunday service, you find all a mess in this church, what would you think about? If we didn't have the gifts of art, the service would be boring. But there are those who come and then they, they make the service lovely. If all of us were preachers, Pastor Kayanja comes, Pastor Gorogosa comes, Gorogosa Pastor Paul comes, Pastor Paul all of us are pastors, Fena pastor. and all of us come and we speak, Fena and the service would be boring. Service yali boye. But how about if all of us were dancing tradition? Nobody plays keyboard, nobody preaches, still people would be bored. Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. If you weren't giving, you don't give your tithe, you don't give your offering, all your, your pledges, we don't give, what would happen? You would find the toilets, Make sure you go that side, get a hole, you go there. So the Bible says, Bible the reason why we are teaching to you and preaching to you to prepare you for the works of your service so that the body of Christ may be built. Give God a mighty hand clap if you can. Number two, I taught you that to serve the Lord reveals the love you have for God. Thirdly, I taught you that serving the Lord is wisdom. And I taught you that what is wisdom? I said wisdom is to be mindful of heaven and conscious of the approaching eternity. The way you will spend your 70, 80 years here on earth will determine how you will spend your millions and millions of years in eternity. Entering in heaven is a free gift. And the way has been made known to us. 
The Bible has made it no secret. It has said that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God has revealed to us his free gift. We are saved by grace. And the gift of God is eternal life. God simply gives us a gift. It's a free gift. Free gift on our side. Not free on Jesus' side. That to Jesus, the Bible says, he paid it all through his body. Through Christ, it's not free. He paid it. To you and me, to receive it is free. How do you get it? When you will say with your mouth, Jesus is my Lord. And believe it in your heart. God raised him from the dead for your sake. And that you are a sinner. And that you cannot make yourself, you can't. You can't make yourself holy. You can't justify yourself. If you believe that, and you confess with your mouth, that Jesus, you are my Lord, and I believe it in my heart, you are saved. Saved from hell. Saved from calamities. Saved from the wrath of God. And that is a free gift. You don't do anything to earn it. After that, what you earn in heaven has to be worked on. The crown in heaven, the rewards in heaven, they are determined by what you have done in the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah, all of us will go to heaven. Hallelujah, all of us, we will go to heaven. But, Praise the Lord. Only the few will wear the crown. So can you fix yourself in that small or narrow road? Amen. Amen. So serving the Lord is wisdom. Amen. Amen. People who are wise, who know where they are going, how they will get there, they begin to prepare their way here. They will serve the Lord despite any challenge. They have no excuses. I was sharing in the morning. Pastor Paul Seruwaji. Yesterday we were speaking to the leaders in the, in the leadership meeting. And he said, Look at this man, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a civil servant. He had a powerful job. He worked in the palace of the king as a cup bearer, a right hand man, and on whom the king leans on. That is a very powerful job. Yet he did that, he executed that job as well as the job of the kingdom to fulfill his purpose for the rebuilding of Israel. To restore Jerusalem. He would work effectively. Ask for leave. 
And then he runs to Jerusalem. And he works effectively to restore Jerusalem. Do you know what? Right now we remember Nehemiah. Not the great post he had in the kingdom of Babylon. We remember him for the great work he did in the kingdom of God. People won't remember you so much for what you have done as a parliamentarian. As a president, but they will remember you how you have served God's people in his kingdom. So whatever you do, balance it. Use it for your advantage to serve God's people, God's kingdom. Lastly, serving God or doing the work of God causes us to overcome the zilk of life. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17 to 20. Zilk is a, hip, a, a Greek word which means the physical son. Solomon says, So I hated life because the work that the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me, and all of this, all of it is meaningless and chasing after the wind. Verse 18. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. Verse 19. And who knows whether he will be a wise man or a fool, yet he will have control over all the work into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too, is meaningless. Verse 20. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now Solomon Suleiman in his old age about to go to heaven he decides to write the book of Ecclesiastes. And he says by saying, I, Solomon, was a great, a great man and, and a king, mighty in wealth, not any other king that has ever ruled Israel that can be compared to me. And Solomon says, I wanted to explore what life is. I desired to know the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Because I understood that Wisdom is far-fetched. And I desired, and I, I wanted to know what, what can satisfy man under the sun. And then the whole of chapter 1 he says, And I decided not to, de to deny anything my heart desired because I wanted to know what can satisfy the man's heart. I poured my life into building projects and I made magnificent buildings with golden tiles beautiful 
ornamented windows. And then my heart wasn't satisfied. I said, maybe let me do agricultural projects. I made different orchards. Botanical gardens, orchards, all kinds of agriculture. Project. He thought maybe that would satisfy the heart. Still, his heart wasn't satisfied. And then he said, I will be merry and I will make parties all the time. He, and then, as you are reading, you find that he says, I hired all kinds of entertainers. All different artists. Skilled artists. Who would come in, in the palace to entertain the king. And he asked himself, But still, what does it matter? My heart is not satisfied at all. He said, okay, let me accumulate wealth beyond any man's wisdom. He made places, treasuries of silver, gold, and precious stones. Still, his heart wasn't satisfied. And he said, look here. I will teach my heart how to be happy. I will not deny my heart any woman that I see at, is attractive to me. And Solomon says, Solomon, I, I went ahead. Any lady that I saw my heart desired, I got her. And the Bible ends up by saying that he, he got 300 wives and 700 concubines. Solomon says, I wanted to explore life. I wanted to know what can satisfy man. Can your labor satisfy you? Can money satisfy you? Can your desires satisfy you? And Solomon said, I thought I wanted to, 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 to explore the difference between wisdom and foolishness. And then he says, I, dis I discovered one thing. Foolishness is like walking in darkness. Yet wisdom is like walking in the light. But still, what does it matter? Both the foolish and the wise die the same. Both are not satisfied. All of them are born hungry, die thirsty. And he said, still, I would, I would try to venture into wisdom and foolishness. And he said, I decided to walk in foolishness for some time. And he discovered that foolishness is heavier, is burdensome because you do not know where you want to go. Even though he wanted to be a fool, Solomon says, even though he wanted to be a fool, still wisdom guided him. And he'd, he found these two things. A foolish man doesn't know the way to town. Yet the wise man, he knows his way out. But also there's another challenge he found. The foolish are peaceful. The foolish, they have no worries. They have no plans. 
They don't mind. If they want to sleep, they will sleep there. As long as they have food, that is their only worry. He discovered the wise, even though they know where they are going, yet they never enjoy life because they are never satisfied. They always see what they don't have. So Solomon says, let me go back, let me go back. Okay, let, let me read from here. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. One of the words of Solomon used many times was the word vanity. Solomon discovered after, after acquiring everything that everything was vanity. God gave him things many people could ever imagine. And King Solomon discovered that each and everything was worthless and empty. And he said in his own words, vanity of vanity. All is vanity. But he speaks this at, at the end of his age. And he says, look here. I wanted to see what can satisfy man. But everything is useless. Everything is useless. In the context that Solomon was writing, see how Solomon was putting it. Look at the context in which Solomon was writing. The context was under the sun. Everything is useless. Under the sun. Under the sun. Amen. 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 Under the sun is a commonly used phrase in the book of Ecclesiastes. Under the sun refers to our earthly existence under the influence of the physical sun. We are which is what we call zilk. The earthly existence that we have is useless. That is the reality. All of us who serve God need to be oriented towards heaven and rewards. All of us need to be oriented towards heaven and oriented towards the day of judgment. A servant of God is one who operates by this wisdom. He knows whatever I do will not go with me in heaven. Therefore, a wise man lives a balanced life. He will work at everything with all his effort as if he's going to be here a thousand times. A thousand years. But he will turn and serve God as if tomorrow is going to heaven. If you are building a house, build it. If you are doing your business, do it. Whatever you plan to do, do it. But also, whatever you find to do in the house of God, do it. Give to the work of God. As if tomorrow you are going to heaven. 
Give money to your projects. Why you sent any project so? As if you are going to be here a thousand years. So balance things. Serve the Lord. With your substance. Serve the Lord. With your family. Serve the Lord. With your job. Serve the Lord. With your ability. Especially since you know that nothing will follow you when you leave this world. Therefore get involved with the work of God today. Let me wind up by reading Revelation 14 and verse 13. Amen. 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 Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write! Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes! Says the Spirit. Because they will rest from their labor. In what they have been laboring on. They have been working. Using their substance even for the kingdom. They have been using their jobs. Even to serve the Lord. To meet the needs of their families. Others have been doctors. Others have been lawyers. Others have been politicians. And they have done it. With the mind. Knowing that they are serving even the Lord. They have served their nation. They have served the kingdom of God. They have served Caesar. They have also served the the kingdom of God. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And give to God what belongs to God. Blessed are those who die now. If they die in the Lord. If they die in Christ. At last they can sigh a relief. And they die. They rest. Only to rise again. They rest from their labor. But when they rise, they see their deeds following them. The deeds following them. You did this. You served this. You helped many people to get saved. Here we are. We are the people who have served through him. He preached to me. He discipled me. He helped me. I was blind. He helped me to see. I was naked. He dressed me. I was hungry. He fed me. That man, he built this. He did this. He helped this. You will see when things are just following. They are coming. Testimonies. Testimonies. And then you turn around. Everything is testifying. Mama, thank you so much. Watch the good day. I was watching the gate. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be, don't wait to be like Solomon. Don't wait. Only to resurrect. And you say, useless, useless. Everything I toiled for. I did not de deny myself anything. I when I wanted to go to Angenua, I went. Even I went to Ambias and I drank a lot. Even I went to this and that. When I wanted to smoke, I smoked. When I wanted to steal, I stole. When I wanted to have, to, to, to have any woman, even I went to the prostitutes. But now, useless, 
useless. I toiled. I built that building, even this one. Even this one. They had cars named Mike. Even this one. They had a room filled with dollars. And I said, Lord, you are the one who is going to give us the money. You have left them. Where I am. Jesus looks at you. Jesus looks at you. Yes, so you have gone to the hospital. You you have just just on your deathbed. And the, and the Lord says, Come, enter into heaven. Enter because of the blood of Jesus. Because I cannot deny it. I promise. 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 I God the Father, He accepted me at the last time. I'm here as an advocate. I gave Him my word. That everyone who confesses me, you will not be ashamed before God. Enter into heaven. You enter with shame. You enter with shame. You enter with shame. Peter says, on your salvation add this on your faith add love goodness and even other things to serve your brothers there you will receive a warm welcome someone will raise the rect You'll find angels aligned up. Now, Bagamba, Ozem Munsi, Ozem Munsi, Yensubi, when the other one, the one who used to rubbish to this earth, you are bypassing, you are just bypassing. He says, Mama. As I finish, let me give you wisdom. The way you will conduct the hundred years of seven years God will give you that. Your way will give you that. The way you will serve Him. The way you will serve Him. Will determine the millions of years you spend with him in eternity. Let me welcome Pastor Kayanja. I want at this time when Pastor Kayanja comes. No, no, no. Actually, just quite a bit more simple. Just put your hand in the chest. Say, Oh Lord. Give me the grace. There is such a great blessing. To serve you. You. But let us serve you. Father, God of love. Give us the anointing to serve you. The grace to serve you. I know there are problems in serving you. There are challenges. But give us the grace. You said, He who forsakes his life for you, He who will not love his life for yourself, will find it. Help us not to discourage ourselves. We discourage ourselves. 